partnership for education and, and jobs. So anything in California, I'm on everything in education and jobs. Because I wanted to do that. I wanted to give you that understanding because when we're in the committees now and they're making the decisions, I'm always there. And since I'm the oldest member of the assembly at age, not height, but age. <laughs> the age of the com committees for Republicans, I'm the oldest guy. And so kind of a lot of people defer to me as the colonel and let me tell them what I think they need to be doing. So when we had the issue this week about adult education, I had taken the time earlier in the month to go to a conference, I believe it was up on Long Beach, when all the uh, executives, the principals of adult education in California came together, and I attended their conference and wanted to become educated on adult education. After listening to the testimony and seeing what has happened to adult education for the past 10 years, I decided I was going to take that on. So I was happy to say that we've got to do budget sub two. Now that's the funding committee. There's going to be another committee possibly hearing about this, and it's going to be in the K through 12 education. Because that's in, in, in that element, um, there's a whole discussion about changing how we look at education. When I was a kid and went to school, education was basically, because we didn't have kindergarten, I'm that old. Basically it was first, first grade through 12th grade. That was age of education. We've now looked and understand that children start thinking cognitively at the age of about two or three. So any of you young mothers, you know, your children start learning and reading, you know, and speaking and everything at the age of two and three. And as a grandfather, I see my children doing that. So we've invested recently in early childhood education. We're going to continue the discussion to look at adult education. Because my argument and discussion is the idea that you just come out of high school and you're done, that's no longer a uh, viable system. And the idea that even if you come out of college and you're done, that's not a viable system. Because technology is changing so quick. Somebody could actually have a very good job in, let's say, manufacturing, and at the age of 35, 40, all of a sudden, that job is no longer there because of technology. Then we need to reinvest in our residents through adult education so that they can get back in the workplace and be able to do a job in another area. So that's my argument I've been making. We need to look at education not as a component of a person's life, but the, actually the extreme development of an individual's life. It's always a part of your learning to be a productive member of society. So that's what my theory is, that's what I'm pushing. We got through the budget sub two, we'll go through the education. If it comes to the assembly floor with the budget, I'll fight it there. And then from there, the Senate will do their thing. And that's why we'll, I'll be talking to Senator Wiley and asking him to come look at you also. Maybe you guys can start writing him letters. We did. Yeah. We did. We did. Yeah. We did. They did. <laughs> oh, good. Then I'll use it as a lever tonight. I'll be with him tonight. I'll say, hey, you got to get over to Vista. So the um, so we understand that. So we'll do that. So instead of me just running my mouth, and I can't give you the background, what I'd like to do is hear from you. Anybody would like to ask me a question or clarification? Please? <laughs> yes, ma'am. My concern is that if adult education does change, where do the people that are already invested fall? Because we're an unknown at this point. If it goes to the community colleges, we don't know what, when or where it's going to go. The question is, if, the if we change adult education and it goes to the community college, which is Governor Brown's proposal, uh, where will it go? The reality is, when you look at the state of California, um, you're a little, we're a little dense here because we've got two community colleges in the area. But if you look up at Northern California, there's one community college for about nine counties. So if you're an adult up there, you don't have an option to go to community college. You're driving 100 miles. So uh, it doesn't work up there. If you look at what's happening in some of the adult education programs, even in denser areas in Los Angeles, where they've actually closed them down, um, it doesn't work. Now, there's an argument being made that you can go ahead and have private industry take over some of these, you know, Phoenix National or Trade Tech or whatever. 
But those programs are very expensive. And so if you go to them, you know, you can pay as much as fourteen, twenty thousand dollars to get something you can get with our investment at five hundred or thousand dollars. So the idea is to get you back in the workplace, not to give you a skill that you can start paying off loans. You know, because you gotta you gotta take care of your families. So I see it as a real economic issue to keep these things going. The budget people did not buy into Governor Brown's uh, proposal. So the window's going to go this way. And this, and I, I want to make sure you're watching this or you're sending letters and letting the governor know that um, he's going to make his proposals, the Senate's going to make our proposals, the Assembly makes their proposals. Around the month of June, when the final budget comes in, then we're going to be able to see what's going to happen. We're not going to know really till June, July, where we're going to be for funding for adult education and where everybody weighs in. Uh, the only thing I can offer, I can only tell you what I can do. I can support you, I can fight for you, but I'm one of 80. And I don't want to misrepresent myself. I People listen to me, but I'm one of 80. But I'm willing to fight that effort because, and there's other members, because we understand that with the economy, we're starting to get out of it. The best thing we can do in California is to invest in all of you. That's the best thing we can do. And the other argument I would make, and I made it earlier, I said, with Prop 30 passed, that was all runoff on supporting education. And so now Prop 30 passed. I will tell you only 42% of that money went into education. 58% went somewhere else. And that's It's went into, my opinion, fat of the government. It didn't go where it should have gone. And, but that's a political issue. I didn't want to come and get that here. But the, uh, it's a real, real sad. We gave $2 million the other day to uh, Secretary of State because they couldn't do their job. And then to me, it was just crazy. I go, God, of all the things we have in the state, we just threw away $2 million bucks. And somebody said, that's only $2 million bucks. I go, a lot of money to me. <laughs> but anyway. When you're dealing with billions, sometimes people forget. They need to go out in the communities and see really the value of a thousand dollar or ten thousand dollar versus two million dollar. Any other question? Yes, ma'am. Uh, community colleges are already impacted, and I'm a teacher here, and I have to tell you that I teach computers in the county, and my students get better jobs. My students have the skills and the confidence to go out and get better jobs. So how do we help you get that word out and have people understand? The question is that community colleges already are impacted, but when you look at the job, the quality we're given here, as I guess in comparison to what the community colleges are charging, um, how do we get that word out? You know, I tell you the truth. Until I walked in your lab here with all those little Apple computers and what you're doing, now, I didn't know you did that. So, and I'm, I represent you. Uh, how do you get the word out? Keep on sending those letters inviting me back. You know, I think when you